Bueno, vamos a comenzar. Buenas tardes a todos y a todas. Hoy continuamos con los webinars de la Comisión de Exploración y Desarrollo del DAPG, que tienen como lema compartir experiencias, ampliar las miradas. Les recordamos que los webinars son multidisciplinarios y que continúan en su horario habitual de las 16 horas de los jueves. La planificación para esta segunda mitad del año se compone de cinco ciclos. Magmatismo y sistemas petroleros, exploración de reservorio shale en la Argentina, exploración offshore en el Atlántico Sur, microsísmica, campos maduros. El propósito de los webinars ha sido crear un canal que permita la difusión y el intercambio de conocimientos con un enfoque multidisciplinario y que se constituya como un medio de comunicación eficaz entre los colegas de las diferentes disciplinas que integran las geociencias y también para todos aquellos interesados de, que vienen de otras profesiones afines a nuestra industria. Hoy continuamos con el ciclo Magmatismo y Sistemas Petroleros, que se compone de 10 webinars para este año. Estos eventos son parte de las tareas preparatorias para el simposio que llevará el mismo nombre y que formará parte, junto a otras actividades, del próximo decimoprimer Congreso de Exploración y Desarrollo de Hidrocarburos, realizarse en noviembre de 2022 en la ciudad de Guaymallén, vecina en la capital de Mendoza, en la provincia del mismo nombre. Ya se encuentra disponible el Call for Astras en la página web del Conecto 2020. El proyecto del ciclo de magmatismo y sistemas petroleros es compartir con la comunidad geológica aquellas contribuciones que tratan sobre la participación y, y o los efectos, tanto positivos como negativos, que el magmatismo tiene sobre los diferentes elementos y procesos del sistema petrolero. En el canal YouTube del YAPG se podrán acceder a todas las charlas, tanto de este ciclo como de todas las del ciclo de exploración, así que si alguno se perdió, alguna, ahí puede verla nuevamente. Agradecemos a todos los oradores que han participado hasta el momento por su excelente predisposición, a YAPG que nos brinda el soporte, la herramienta, la organización y su plataforma para que estemos aquí hoy reunidos y por supuesto a todas las empresas que auspician este evento. También extendemos nuestro agradecimiento a todos los colegas que participan en la organización de estos webinars. Hoy tendremos una única charla que estará a cargo de Alén Sanela de la Universidad de Le Mans. La presentación tendrá una duración aproximada de 50 minutos, al término de la misma, dispondremos de un intervalo de tiempo para responder preguntas. Estas pueden ser formuladas por escrito en el panel de chat que se encuentra a la derecha, que aparece como P y R. En cualquier momento durante la presentación, pueden ser en español, en inglés o si quieren en portugués, que nosotros se las vamos a traducir a leer. Recordamos que si desean hacer un comentario de manera oral, pueden solicitar que se abra el micrófono en el mismo chat o bien accionando un icono de una mano que se encuentra en el panel de los participantes abajo a la derecha. El título de exposición de Alen es Fracturing in Anastropic Rocks from Field Examples to Experimental Modeling. Alen es profesor adjunto en la Universidad de Le Mans, Francia, desde el año 2014 y también director del Laboratorio de Geociencias desde hace dos años. Alain es un geólogo estructuralista especializado en la interacción entre fluidos, agua, hidrocarburos, magma y rocas, particularmente en sedimentos anisotrópicos como las fangolitas, o, vamos a llamar lutitas o shale. Se ha dedicado a estudiar especialmente estas interacciones en roca madre, tal como el caso de la Comisión Vaca Muerta en nuestra cuenca neuquina. Basados en trabajos de campo, se ha destacado en resaltar el rol de los BIF como consecuencia de la migración de fluidos en la roca madre. 
Recientemente investigó los parámetros involucrados en la localización de estos mismos RIF o venillas de calcita en los, dentro de los seis. Durante sus tareas de investigación, desarrolló modelos experimentales mediante la creación de nuevos equipos, tanto 2D como 3D, y materiales para el modelado en geociencias. O así como desarrolló hace pocos años un modelo experimental para reproducir la producción de fluido dentro de un material granular y poroso. Recientemente, desarrolló un nuevo material anisotrópico para estudiar el efecto de la anisotropía en la geometría de la fra del fracturamiento por intrusión de fluido. Bueno, de este, después de este breve resumen del de CV de Alem, este, le, le dejamos toda la, la plataforma a su disposición para que comience su exposición. Alem, you can start. Ok. Ok, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, I am happy to to share with you uh, some of my uh, research uh, that I did um, during uh, some years of research here in Le Mans uh, and uh, related to, to fracturing in uh, anisotropic rocks, uh, especially in Argentina uh, and in the Neogen Basin. So first of all, to introduce uh, free rock interactions, uh, it is important to mention that uh, in sedimentary basins, uh, there are many, many examples of uh, free the rock interactions uh, as uh, sand intrusions, the remobilization of, of sand, uh, bitumen veins, uh, a large uh, migration of uh, hydrocarbons uh, through uh, sediments, magmatic intrusion, of course, uh, uh, really, really well exposed in the Neocan Basin, uh, for example, and mineralized veins. Uh, that uh, uh, in particular studied during uh, many years. Uh, all of these structures occur in the Nokian Basin and that's why I studied these, uh, these uh, features uh, in the Nokian Basin uh, since many years. But it is also important to mention that other examples of fluid rocks interaction uh, exist uh, as uh, mud volcanoes, uh, geyser, or, or others. Um, regarding uh, bedding parallel veins, uh, also called BPV, uh, it is important to, 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 to have a, a sort of definition of this kind of, uh, of structures. So here you have a, a, a photo of the, of the uh, Vacamerta formations uh, of the Nukian Basin where you can observe a large amount of uh, white levels. Uh, and if you look carefully, you can see that these levels are, uh, in fact, uh, mineralized veins, uh, BPV, bedding parallel veins. Why um, they, they, they are called like this, uh, BPV, because uh, they are bed para parallel, par parallel and they exhibit a fibrous structures. This is uh, in, partic in particular really well uh, um, uh, exposed uh, here in, in, on, a th on this uh, thin section. And uh, uh, the particularity of these veins are, uh, is that uh, the minerals started to, to, to grow uh, from the median zone toward the edges of the veins. That's why the, these veins are uh, characterized by uh, non-taxial growth. In the literature, another term exists for these uh, veins, uh, the term beef, because of the resemblance between, uh, between uh, uh, the fibrous uh, structure of the minerals and the fibrous of the, of the muscles, of animal muscles. But recently, the term beef uh, start to be abundant, uh, and uh, the, the term bedding parallel veins uh, is more uh, uh, used. The widespread of uh, this uh, kind of uh, structures are really, really large, because here you have a map, for example, of uh, all occurrences of bedding parallel veins that uh, we reported uh, in 2021. 
Uh, and uh, uh, these structures are characterized by three main compositions, gypsum, calcite, or quartz, depending of the mineralogy and the composition of the host rocks. Uh, it is almost always uh, uh, anisotropic rocks, uh, like shades, mudstone, or metamorphic rock. And sometimes they, they can be of economic interest because they exhibit gold, silver, or uranium, uh, and they can be uh, a source of resources. But the Earth is not the only planet where it is possible to observe this kind of uh, veins. We discovered uh, one year uh, before that these kind of veins can be observed at the surface uh, of Mars. This is a gay crater here, and in this area, the Curiosity rover uh, imaged the, surf the surface of Mars, and on the photo, it is possible to recognize white line, white, white veins, characterized by uh, a fibrous structure. They are almost always bedding parallel, but some, some of them are oblique, and they are composed by uh, anhydride or sulfur. So what is uh, interesting in bedding parallel veins, it, 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 uh, it is that this kind of structure, of the geological structure, are not only present on Earth, but in, uh, on, on Mars too. To explain the origin and, and, and the formation of, this, uh, of these uh, veins, there, there is not a consensus because this is the result of a complex, of a, a multiple complex phenomenon, geological processes. And, but we can uh, involve such uh, mechanism as uh, the fluid overpressures. The consequence of fluid overpressures on, on a rock, uh, we can summarize uh, uh, the, st the, the state of the stress uh, of a rock with the Mohr cycle here. If the, the rock or the material uh, is submitted with, uh, to uh, free the high free pressure, the cycle will shift, will move uh, to the left uh, and touch probably the failure envelope of uh, the material and uh, we will obtain the failure of, of the rock, the fracturing of the rock. But in some cases, the cycle will move to the left and will pass in the left part of the graphic of the of, of the of the diagram here here it's a it's a, a more um, uh, it's a, a detailed uh, uh, drum and here you can see that sometimes the circle can touch the failure envelope in the left part of the of the diagram and if the cycle touch here in that point the failure envelope the theory predicts the formation of an, an extensional fracture, a tensile fracture. Here, both tensile and shear fracture can be produced. And this is exactly uh, the, what it can happen to obtain the natural hydraulic fracturing of a rock due to freedom of pressure. And the mechanism involved in such freedom of pressure uh, increase uh, are, uh, have been already described by several authors. Uh, diagenetic, uh, it can be of diagenetic origin, like uh, the smectite elite transformation due to diagen diagenetic process, the mechanical compaction due to the burial of, of the rock, chemical uh, compaction and generation of hydrocarbons uh, in the petroleum system, for example. But these processes, these mechanisms are not uh, the, the lone parameters because some other authors mentioned, uh, mentioned other key parameters uh, as uh, like the force of crystallizations because 
due to the growth of the minerals, antitoxin growth, the minerals will generate a force uh, which can push uh, the, the, the edges of the veins and, and generate uh, their, own, their, their own force. Tectonic stresses, in particular when, when you are in, in a compressive uh, uh, basin, uh, the horizontal compressive stress will generate, uh, will, uh, will uh, help to open vertically fractures. I studied the BPV in the Neocan Basin. I will not uh, present uh, in detail the, the basin because I'm sure you are all uh, of you uh, 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 geologists that uh, know the, the, the basin, but uh, the particularity of the basin is that uh, there is a great exposure of fluid injection uh, system, magmatic uh, uh, veins, mineralized veins and bitumen. And that's why I studied the, these processes uh, uh, in the basin. We uh, managed a, st a study uh, during uh, four, four years, uh, during the, the PhD thesis of Salomé Larmier, uh, in partnership with uh, Total. Uh, we studied uh, data from uh, subsurface coming from cores of the Vacamuerta formation in this area, in the, in the abatement. And we studied also two outcrops one uh, near Longkopwe, uh, just here in the canyon of uh, Huncal, and another one, uh, the well-known outcrop of Puerta Coraco, just here. So as you know, in the Neocan Basin, there, is, there are three uh, source, potential source rock for hydrocarbons, Los Moges formation, uh, Vaca Muerta, and Agrio formation. But we, uh, uh, we essentially study the Vacamuerta formation because uh, this formation um, regroup uh, the most uh, important amount of PPV in the basin. The subsurface data uh, exhibit a large amount of, uh, of uh, veins, uh, micro uh, BPV, like this small vein, like this, micro BPV, uh, uh, present uh, in the middle or inside uh, of, of facies, or micro BPV or continuous BPV at the interface of uh, uh, two different facies. So we perform a description, a, a high resolution description of the sedimentological um, uh, succession of, of the Bakamata formation and we note each time where uh, uh, the localization of each BPV or group of BPV in, uh, in the course of the Vacamata formation to investigate the parameter that can evolve in the localization and the distribution of this kind of veins uh, in the Vacamata formation. We study in particular the BPV, the localization, the, the thickness, the length, and the host rocks like facies, like the facies, the mineralogy, the TOC, the maturity, and to try to see a correlation between the host parameter, the host rock parameters, and the the localization of BP. We discover that when you look the the amount of uh, micro BPV in the course of the Vacamata formation they are not distributed randomly. Here you have a graph with all of the uh, cores. So the cores are located here. Here is, uh, is the name of the cores. And you have here the amount of micro BPV inside the fascias and micro BPV at the interface of the fascias. The major uh, result is that there are uh, more BPV loca localized at the interface between two fascias than inside fascias. The other uh, 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 result is that uh, um, the, the heterogeneities, like uh, the transition, the boundary between fascias, localize uh, uh, the BPV, but 
also the presence of hash bed in the, 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 sec the sedimentary segments. The other, uh, the other uh, parameter that we, we, we pay attention is the, the role of the maturity uh, on the, the presence of, of, of the localization of, of BPV. Here, we especially study four uh, cores, four well, uh, this one. Uh, we have here the, uh, the row, uh, the maturity degree, and the TOC of each um, uh, well. What is uh, really uh, well uh, demonstrated here is that the, the, the amount of uh, the number of uh, BPV per meter in the Bakamata formation is strictly dependent of the degree of maturity of the, of the, the sediments. And this is true in all of the well that we 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 try uh, where we try to 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 look this parameter so it means that the degree of maturity seem to seems to control the abundance and the thickness of the veins in the vacamata formation why this is because if you uh, transform um, more uh, kerogen in in, uh, in hydrocarbons, you will uh, be able to generate a higher freedom of oppression that will contribute to the generation of uh, natural hydraulic fractures in addition to the force of crystallization and tectonic stresses, of course. We also uh, performed our study uh, in uh, at our crop. Uh, on these two localities, Patakorato and Chosmala, and, and uh, at Chosmala and uh, Umkal near Longkopoe. This is a view of a 3D uh, photogrammetric model that, that we um, built uh, to study the, the extension of the fractures of, uh, in, in, in this locality. This is not a photograph, this is really a, a photogrammetric model uh, with a higher resolution. Uh, so, in this locality, uh, this is Uncan, uh, we uh, explore with the, with the same, same method uh, the localization of the BPV. So, we did a really detailed uh, log of the succession and we note each, uh, uh, each uh, occurrence of a BPV. The BPV are in, in, in blue here, light blue. And we try to see the correlation here uh, um, of uh, the localization between the localization of BPV and the parameter of the host work. But in this case, we, we wanted to go further and to try to establish a relationship between the, the, the host work parameter and the parameter that can control the mineralogy and the sedimentology of the rock. Here is a study that we uh, did with uh, some uh, colleagues here in Le Mans and in Rennes. So this is a, a log here of the Vacamarta formation uh, at Umkal, where we plot all of the BPV beef uh, localization. And we try to, uh, uh, to correlate the localization of BPV and the sequence of sedimentation uh, of the Bacamarta formation. And we try to extract the signal of the mineralogy of the TOC uh, to extract the periodic variation of each parameters of the host rock. This is a zoom here, the red of the red box here. And we try to analyze with a, a, a statistic model, uh, the recurrence of the periodicity to uh, be able to uh, 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 
to make a link between the sedimentological discontinuities generated by uh, the Milankovic, Milankovic cycle. And we found, we found that the discontinuities generated by the Milankovic cycle cycles, which, which, con which control, in fact, the, the, the sedimentology um, parameters, sedimentological parameters, as the TOC contains, the, the uh, detritic content uh, and other parameters. And we, we uh, make a link between the orbital parameter and the distribution of BPV. Uh, so the orbital parameter uh, as the eccentricity, for example, with the recurrence of this period, obliquity and precession. And we discover that uh, the, 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 the Milankovitch cycles seem to um, control, in fact, the distribution of BPV uh, by, the by the generation of discontinuities, mechanical discontinuities uh, in the sediment. In the Neuken Basin, one of the most uh, uh, important question is uh, related to BPV is uh, the timing and the conditions of formation of these vents. And one way to answer to this question is to perform a study of fluid inclusions, aqueous in inclusion here, visible here, and uh, uh, hydrocarbon in in inclusion. So we perform this study uh, to uh, be able to have the temperature of formation of these veins. And uh, here you have two samples, uh, micro BPV here and uh, macro BPV here. And here is uh, the diagram of the frequency of uh, the, uh, the, the temperature with the temperature here. And the, the fluid at the moment of the formation of uh, the veins was at a temperature uh, from um, uh, 60 to uh, more than, in some cases, two or 300 degrees. So the range of the temperature uh, uh, is really, really uh, high, but uh, we only performed this study on few, on few samples because it was not really, really easy to find um, uh, good, a good quality of fluid inclusion to perform this study. That's why we complete our study with uh, another uh, technique, and the clumped isotope technique, so also used by several uh, authors like uh, Weger, for, them, for, for example. And uh, uh, we especially did this study to see if during the crystallization and the growth of the crystals inside the veins, from the center to the edges of the veins, uh, there is a, a decrease of temperature through time. And that, that is one of our observations, is that at the beginning of the circulation and, and the, the, the generation of the veins, the fluid was uh, high, uh, in temperature, and the temperature decreases with the generation of the several phases of, uh, of the, the minerals. So during the crystallization of the veins, there is a cooling of the um, fluid system um, which uh, circulates in, uh, in uh, the, the sediments. One of the uh, Works. Some some uh, author uh, propose um, a real complex uh, timing of formation for 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 these veins. Cruz et al. Uh, wrote a, a really nice paper in in, in uh, this year uh, to explain uh, uh, when the several phases of uh, the BPV uh, have been uh, generated. Uh, because uh, they are in particular study BPV and the several phases here in blue and in red inside a vein and oblique vertical veins and oblique veins uh, in terms of, of timing and they est establish a sort of, of sort of um, 
time scale, uh, proposing that in the in the first time, really early uh, uh, in, in the history of the Vacamarta formation, uh, more or less during uh, Upper Cretaceous, you generate the first beef in the inner zone of the beef of the BPV, and after. At the end of the Cretaceous times, through uh, tertiary tertiary times, Cenozoic, uh, you generate the, the the second, third, or or more phases uh, generation uh, in the veins and oblique and vertical veins. It means uh, we discover uh, with uh, the, the the this uh, this study and the other study performed by. Uh, uh, several other authors that the history of generation of BPV in the, in the Vacamar formation uh, is really, really, really complex and depending uh, of the outcrop uh, that you study and the techniques that you that you use to have the timing of generation. For example, in the study of Cruze et al, they used UPB dating uh, on calcites to study uh, the timing of generation. But the thing is that when you study this kind of veins, uh, if you only study uh, the field, and uh, even if you uh, perform uh, a lot of uh, analytical uh, analysis uh, on la uh, in the lab, you are not able to answer to all of the questions related to the formation of these veins. That's why the exper experimental modeling uh, is a way to try to investigate the physical parameters that are involved in the generation of, of such uh, geological structures. In particular, if you want to study the effect of fluid generation on the natural adrenaline fracturing process, or uh, if you want to uh, study the, the effect of of tectonic stresses on, on, on natural uh, uh, fractures, uh, and also if you want to study a parameter not uh, always uh, uh, taking in account uh, the, 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 the anisotropy, that, uh, uh, and the anisotropy, uh, we will see uh, a bit later, is uh, a really important parameter to take in account if you want to study the geometries of the fractures uh, networks. That's why in Le Mans, we are specialized in the experimental modeling, and in particular, we are able to generate our own materials, granular materials, uh, to uh, be able to build a, 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 a scale material uh, able to represent uh, the nature. Some years ago, during my PhD, I uh, finished my PhD in, two, in, in 2012, uh, 13, uh, I developed a new way for the modeling uh, with a new materials uh, supposed to represent a source work. A source work is characterized at the first order by granular uh, materials uh, separate in two uh, phases. The first one is uh, the sediments uh, in proper, the granular grain, and the other part is the hydrocarbon, the kerogen, uh, uh, solid kerogen, which will become um, a, a fluid due to the uh, hydrocarbon generation. And the generation of uh, the organic matter uh, uh, will uh, su uh, submit a, a, a phase transition from solid to fluid, gas or, or, or liquid, uh, during the, the generation of hydrocarbon. That's why during this, uh, this uh, study, I mixed the th a silica powder, a really fine grain, uh, granular materials, uh, impermeable, like uh, a shale, for example, and B beeswax, it's a small um, um, uh, balls of, of, of uh, 
uh, of one millimeter of diameter of wax uh, to generate a mixture in various proportion because you can control the proportion of each, of each material so you can induce a sort of uh, TOC content in your materials yeah. and you generate here the darker uh, uh, here is uh, the wax and the yellow is it is yellow because uh, I just had uh, a color uh, and you generate an uh, isotropic material. But uh, and I perform some experiments with with these materials. I will talk about these materials just after. And I I build a new uh, concept of uh, modeling uh, consisting of a box like this where you put uh, you layer your material like a cake and uh, you the box rests on a table like this with hot plates and and the aim of the experiments is really simple you just heat the model and you wait and because the temperature will rise up the wax will melt at uh, a temperature uh, uh, of about 62 degrees and you will be able to generate to generate a fluid within the granular materials and you simulate the generation of of uh, hydrocarbons in your materials so this is a view of an experiment here, for example, this is a, the experiment is totally saturated by water to avoid some uh, pro problem when you generate uh, the fluid. You have some uh, force of uh, tension because uh, you generate a fluid, so you generate tension between grains. So that's why we saturated the, the model uh, with water. And at the end of the experiment, you just cut, you make cross section with a knife and you just take photo and you have a serial cross section here that you can observe and at the at the end of the of this kind of experiment we observe that we generated horizontal almost horizontal fractures um, filling by uh, wax and what is really uh, nice in this uh, picture is that at the beginning of the experiment here you can recognize three different layers the two first one here are uh, are the, the 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 source rocks the mixture between wax and silica the the only difference is the color and here is pure silica just to add a weight uh, above and at the beginning, the thickness of this both colored uh, layer were the same, was the same. But at the end, this one is thinner than this one. And it means that the only possibility to obtain that is that the, the wax uh, has migrated into these fractures and the fractures is open through time and just lift the all of the of the above uh, sediments but the problem with uh, this kind of materials is that it was not really representative of a source rock because it was a isotropic material that's why during, uh, since I am assistant professor here in Le Mans, I, ser I search uh, another mixture, another material, able to simulate uh, more uh, and to be more um, representative of source rock. And I, I, I choose finally uh, rep seed wax. Uh, and micas. Micas has, uh, um, have the particularity to have a high anisotropy, and uh, this uh, 
kind of wax is uh, also an isotope. And I did a mixture in various proportion, uh, uh, again, to obtain an anisotropic material. So you can, rec you can see here some really uh, fine um, uh, levels uh, here, uh, which uh, mark the, the anisotropy of the materials. And in these experiments, we performed with the student uh, a 2D experiment. So this is almost the same of the previous 3D experiment, but in 2D, because the, in 2D, this is able to take photo and to try to analyze the deformation uh, after the experiment. So the aim is, it is the same. You have the hot plate, you have here the box, the Hellesho cell, uh, 30 by 30 by 3 centimeters uh, width, and you just heat the model and you take photo each second, for example, to, to, to be able to analyze the deformation after. This is the result of the experiment. This is the beginning here, bottom of, the, of an experiment. We use a, BP, a, PP, a PIV analysis. So at the beginning here, you can see that there, there is no deformation in the model, and it is normal because here we didn't we did not uh, generated a fractures. And then when you start to develop a fracture here, you started to induce deformation to lift part of uh, the <coughs> The uh, upper part of the of the model, just above the fracture, and after, if you continue the experiment, you continue to open the fracture, and the opening of the fractures is generated by the migration of the wax through the pores, the pore space of the materials, until this level, and you feel progressively the the fracture by the wax. So this kind of experiments show that even if in nature several parameters are necessary necessary to obtain BPV, for example, theoretically and experimentally, you can open a fracture just if you generate a fluid within a, mat a granular material. We did the same, but with an orientate uh, uh, anisotropy. Here, we uh, depose our materials, not horizontally like this, but with an angle of 45 degrees like this. At the beginning of the experiments here, you see here, the tendency of the anisotropy of the layering here. And at the final stage of the experiment, you can see that we developed um, the fractures, but the fractures is, is not really uh, horizontal. It, tend, it, it tends to be horizontal, but sometimes the fractures jump by following the anisotropy to uh, just go in another level here, sometimes above, sometimes beneath. And it was uh, the, the beginning of the experiment uh, showing that the anisotropy could be a major parameter in experiments if, and it is really important to take in account this parameter if you want to understand the geometry of the fracturing in an, in an anisotropic rocks. That's why uh, we, we uh, continue to, uh, to explore this uh, parameter uh, in, in, in other experiments. So, 
So the previous experiment that I showed uh, are, are all with a material able to generate a fluid within their own system, their, their own granular materials. But if you want to study the, for example, uh, the geometries of fracturing, uh, of fluid assist fracturing when you have a magnetic intrusion, for example, this is not appropriate because in the case of magmatic migration and intrusion, the fluid comes from, the, the, don't come from the rock, but uh, from another way. And you have to generate materials, uh, anisotropic materials, to represent uh, a real rock. We choose for these uh, new materials, mica, again, sand, and gelatin. And the mixture with the three components give our materials. An anisotropic material, so anisotropy is given by mica, but with some more round grain materials. And the gelatin is really important because in these materials, you can control the cohesion of the material. And this is really important because if you want to develop tensile fractures, you have to have a cohesion in your material. And to simulate the magma, I choose glucose syrup. This is like a sugar syrup, uh, colored by a, a particular red colorant. Uh, uh, to to simulate the, the intrusion of the magma, but the most maybe the most important part of a study when you when you do experimental modeling is to scale your material because if you don't scale your material, you can't represent the nature because you are not really sure about the behavior of your materials when you you will deform your materials. You the scale, the scaling of the materials is needed to prove that your materials have as the same behavior, the mechanical behavior of a real one. And that's the, it was really a, a big part of this study. We took the materials, we uh, did a lot, a lot uh, of tests, of shear tests, uh, uh, in the materials, and we uh, perform this test with uh, an anisotropy horizontal and oriented to be able to predict the, 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 the failure of our materials in function of the orientation of the anisotropy. This is a graph here. Here is the orientation of the anisotropy, and here this is a uniaxial compressive stress. And you can see the hump here with several, uh, uh, there, there are several curves because several materials, we can change the proportion between mica and sand, or we can add gelatin or not. And the proportion of gelatin, we control the, the cohesion and the proportion of Mica we co will control the degree of anisotropy. And this is the first material able to do that in experimental modeling. And to be sure that our materials uh, are really, really uh, representative of a natural rock, we compare the result that we obtain, this one in blue, with a natural, with natural tests made uh, on real rock. Here, this is uh, the strength uh, of our test. Here, this is the strength uh, for the natural materials. So the only difference here is the the is the, the difference of of um, of the amount of stress and strength necessary to deform, to break the matter. But the, the behavior is the same.
to try to understand the, the effect of the anisotropy on, for example, on the geometry of uh, magmatic intrusions, we perform uh, uh, 2D experiment. It's a heavy show cell, really simple, with a pump to inject the fluid, the golden, the, the, the glucose syrup here. And here we put our materials. The, the principle of the material is really, really simple. This is the beginning, and we inject through time. Here, this is for uh, isotropic materials, 100% of sand. And we did this experiment with, with several materials. I just synthesized the results. Here, the result of an injection in a 100% um, uh, sand uh, materials. Here, it, with the mixture of 70% uh, of sand and 30% of mica, 50% uh, of each materials, and 30% of sand and 70% and of mica. And the results of our, uh, our injection are totally different. And it me it, here, for example, if you have a, a domination of the mica, 70%, you will generate a seal. For example, in the case of 50% of each material, you developed seals and dikes. And because I'm sure you, you know the, the plumbing system geometries that uh, we can uh, observe with the seismic or other um, uh, system of imaging, you can you, you see, you see the, the similarity between this and the, plumbing, the natural plumbing system. And here, so this is the degree of anisotropy, low, isotropic, and here, anisotropic. And to see if our experiments were uh, adapted, we uh, try to plot our uh, experiment in the diagram that Galland et al. Uh, uh, established uh, with uh, the parameter P1 and P2, uh, that, uh, and these two parameters uh, are uh, non-dimensional non uh, parameter. And we saw that our experiments are uh, uh, correlate with the uh, prediction of this diagram for the material A, A and B, for example. We are in the box of the dikes, tips, and we, uh, in fact, developed a dike. For the material C, here in red, we are in the magma, magma reservoir, and for this one, D, we are in, in sealed. So I hope uh, I, I just make some uh, some uh, squeezing uh, for to, to present some some results. I, I hope uh, the the topic interests uh, uh, a large part of, of you. I would like to thank you for your attention, and I would like to 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 tell you that in uh, in November I will stay one month in Argentina. Uh, in uh, La Plata, because I will work uh, at the offices of ITEC. So, so if you are if you are interested uh, to discuss, please don't hesitate to contact me or to contact uh, Octavio Arnan, for example, because they have uh, my contacts, and uh, I would be really happy to discuss with you. Thank you very much. <laughs>